My name is Karen Harris, and I've been here for 20 years. I've been here for a long time. I organize the events. I do the events, and I introduce the authors, and I organize the book groups, and I'm a bookseller. When I first came here, when my kids were young, we'd come to the bookstore, and I always thought it would be a great place to work. So it's been fun. It started the year that Lincoln was born. It was begun the year that Darwin was born in that same year. So it's kind of amazing. It's the second oldest continuously operating bookstore in the country. And the first one is the Moravian Bookstore in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is a religious bookstore. So ours is the first um, sort of commercial bookstore that's been continuously operating for 200 years. In 1809, when the bookstore began, this was the first building. Mark Newman um, resigned as the principal of Phillips Academy to, to become a bookseller to the Academy, and it was a printing press and a bookstore at the same time. And it was, throughout the whole history, it was both until it moved to this location. Um, his bookstore was located on the first floor, and in 1813, they moved the existing printing press and the books to the second floor of Newman's building. Then Timothy Flagg and Abraham Gould operated the press from 1813 to 1832. They developed a valued reputation as printers and possessed the first fonts of Greek and Hebrew type in America. This page shows a lot of the different fonts that they had and Moses Stewart learned Hebrew and Greek in order to make up the fonts for the printing. And then the printing press, still doing all of the printing and the book selling at the same time, moved to this brick building, which does not exist anymore. This is the only picture we had of it in a book, an old book. But it was there from 1832 to 1860, so it was quite a while in that building. In 1860, it moved from this old brick building up at Phillips Academy down to town. So in 1860 to 1890, for 30 years, it um, was located in this building across from what is now, you know, what has always been the big old town hall. And this is Mr. Draper standing outside the building. And it was 37 Main Street. This is the little office in the corner of that building. For some reason, we have lots of pictures of this building, which is quite lucky. This is the interior of the building, and you can see the bookshelves inside 37 Main. We think that this is uh, Mr. Cole at the right, and the books are in the cabinets. You can see the glass cabinets with the books. And then there are stacks of books and stationery. They supplied all these things for Phillips Academy. They even supplied toilet paper. <laughs> This is the delivery truck from the Maine and Chestnut location. We don't know the dates on this. I, I suppose people that know cars could figure so out. they delivered books to people? They did, yeah. Lincoln Giles was an architect, and, and they built this. These were two houses on Main Street, and they turned this into Old Andover Village. It was like the first little shopping mall in town. So these houses are built into the... Um, Old Andover Village, and this is the carriage house in back, which is the bookstore now. So what they did is they opened it up and made this balcony. They put in the fireplace. They put in the small paned windows. They put in that um, dumbwaiter that carries the books from, we often receive the books in the basement, and then we used to have the textbooks upstairs, so you'd have that dumbwaiter that would carry all the heavy textbooks up to the three flights of stairs. So it's really kind of fun. I'll have to show you the dumb waiter. Yeah, I, I didn't show you that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people have ridden this. Yeah, she said. I shouldn't and say that, that on camera. Great. Yeah, it's happening in the high quality. 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 I love this called a dumb waiter, too. <laughs> this was when they first, first opened. And this was more of an all-purpose bookstore at this point. And they did everything by hand, even when we first moved here in the 60s. They wrote it all out by hand. This, in this picture, this is Ethel Cross, 
who still comes into the store to this day. Yeah. She was kind of like the mother of the bookstore, of this location of the bookstore, and she brought in the coffee pot and the cookies, and we used to have hard candy. But a lot of the atmosphere that's here today is from things that she had done. I think we're very lucky that it's such a magical space because it really is just a very welcoming, just the look of the place. People have come in and said that it looks like a European bookstore, it looks like an old-fashioned bookstore, so I think that helps. There was an article in the paper they asked about all these classic books and did bookstores in Boston have them, and we had everything. We had all of them, so we got a good selection of, we have a lot of the latest bestsellers, but in the lit room we have a lot of everything else too. We also have all of those shelves of our staff favorites and all over the store we have those. So when we read books and we can sell books, but we think of books we'd love to have in the store. We keep trying to do interesting things because once you get people into this space, they often come back. You know, part of it is that, that whole step of getting people in here for the first time. We're trying to do ebooks, which people don't think of to come to us for ebooks. We're doing a lot of out of print searches because a lot of books are going out of print more quickly now. It's like with the tax laws, people are, the publishers are taxed on their inventory. So the publishers used to keep a lot of inventory and they don't anymore. So it all goes into remainders, it all goes into sale books. So now we do a lot of out of print print hunting for books. We have to kind of do the things a lot of the big stores don't do or Amazon doesn't do. So we do a lot of events, we do book groups. You know, just sort of, we're having um, classes, we're having knitting classes here. And one of the retired teachers from Phillips Academy is teaching Spanish here. So we're trying, we've had wording, writing workshops. So we're trying to do a lot of things that the big stores don't do. I think you have to kind of become a community gathering center now in this economy. We've had a couple book groups here that have been going about, I don't know, 15 years, I think, which have been good. And some people come and go, but it's a lot of the core group still remains. And the events we started doing, we had somebody who was a poet who did a lot of poetry events. So we sort of built up an audience, and she used to get better turnouts than they did at the Blacksmith House in Cambridge, where they have big poetry events. And then we started doing a lot of author events. We always used to do those, but lately we've been doing one every week and even more than that. We're having Norton Jester come. I don't know if you ever read The Phantom Tollbooth when you were a kid, but it's wonderful. It's the 50th anniversary. He's 80 years old. So he's coming. We're going to go pick him up and we're going to have a birthday cake and a party. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. keep the best of that old traditional part of the store, but then also step into this whole modern world because you have to keep up with that. They've thought of making it, um, you know, Wi-Fi and having coffee and pastries and things. And we're thinking of getting a liquor license so that maybe we could have wine, like a wine bar. My book group would love that because we often bring a bottle of wine for the book groups that meet here. So we're kind of trying to figure out in an innovative way what would draw people here. But Susan Leno had said that there's a magic about this space, especially that whole area down around the fireplace. People come back all the time. We get crowds of people. people oh, I haven't been here. and Oh, it's still, still so much the same. And they come here and they go to the Lantern Brunch across the way. And both of those have been here for so long. You know, it's kind of town institutions. And a lot of town has changed. It's a lot of nail salons and, and um, banks, you know, it's, and insurance companies. So it's one of the things that's, if you grew up in town, it's one of the things that's still here. Our manager, Mark, said it's more like the Brigadoon bookstore. I don't know if you ever heard of the movie Brigadoon or the book. It was this old movie with Gene Kelly, and there was this time, it was in Ireland, but you'd step back in time, 
at a certain time every 10 years or something, you could step back in time. And he was saying when you step through the doorway, it's kind of like stepping back in time. And I think in a lot of ways it is. It's kind of magical that way. We don't have a visible clock that you can see. We kind of, kind of want people to come and get lost among the books. <laughs>